Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about radon to use today. So concentrated samples of radon are prepared synthetically for medical and research purposes. Typically, a supply is kept in a glass vessel, in aqueous solution, or in the form of a porous solid, from which the radon can readily flow. Every few days, the accumulated radon is pumped off, purified and compressed into a small tube, which is then sealed and removed. The tube of glass is a source of penetrating gamma rays, which come mainly from one of radon's decay products, bismuth-214. Such tubes of radon have been used for radiation therapy and radiology. So radon history. Radon, chemical element a heavy radioactive gas of the group 18 noble gases seen here of the periodic table generated by the radioactive decay of radium originally starting with uranium and then decaying to radium and then radon so as you can see that's why radon was originally called radium emanation because radon emanated from radium Radon is a colorless gas 7.5 times heavier than air and more than 100 times heavier than hydrogen gas. The gas liquefies at negative 61.8 degrees Celsius or negative 79.2 degrees Fahrenheit and freezes at negative 71 degrees Celsius or negative 96 degrees Fahrenheit. On further cooling, solid radon glows with a soft yellow light that becomes orange red at the temperature of liquid air or negative 169 degrees or negative 319 degrees Fahrenheit. So how is radon made? How was it made back then and how is it made today? Radon is rare in nature because its isotopes are all short-lived and because its source, radium, is a scarce element. The atmosphere contains traces of radon near the ground as a result of seepage from soil and rocks, both of which contain minute quantities of radium. Radium occurs naturally as a decay product of uranium present in various rocks. Here we have uranium, radium, and radon. In the late 1980s, naturally occurring radon had come to be recognized as a potentially serious health hazard. Radioactive decay of uranium in minerals, especially granite, generates radon that can diffuse through soil and rock and enter buildings through basements. Radon has a higher density than air, and through water supplies derived from wells. Radon has a significant solubility in water, which means that it can dissolve very easily in water. So that means you're able to drink it if it dissolves in it, and that's not a good thing. The gas can accumulate in the air of poorly ventilated houses. The decay of radon produces radioactive daughters polonium, bismuth, and lead isotopes that can be ingested from the well water or be absorbed in dust particles and then breathed into the lungs, which is not a good thing because, as seen here, it can cause lung cancer. Exposure to high concentrations of this radon and its daughters over the course of many years can greatly increase the risk of developing lung cancer, as previously stated. Indeed, radon is now thought to be the greatest cause of lung cancer among non-smokers in the United States. Radon levels are highest in homes built over geological formations that contain uranium mineral deposits. Again, and uranium is the last naturally occurring element on the periodic table and it's element number 92 which means that it has 92 protons. So natural radon consists of three isotopes, one from each of the three natural radioactive disintegration series, the uranium, thorium, and actinum series. Discovered in 1900 by German chemist Friedrich E. Dorn, radon-222 has a half-life of 3.823 days. The longest-lived isotope arises in the uranium series. The name radon is sometimes reserved for its isotopes called thoron and actinon because they originate in the thorium and actinum series respectively. Thorium is a radioactive element, it's part of the actinites, and it's element number 90. And actinum is element number 89. So how and where is radon extracted? Radon-220 or thoron has a half-life of 51.5 seconds, and it was observed in 1899, seen here, by American scientist Robert B. Owens and British scientist Ernst Rutherford, seen here in 1899. So this is America in 1899, and this is Britain in 1899. Robert Bobby Owens was a U.S. electrical engineer. He was a director of the Maryland Academy of Science. He was secretary of Franklin Institute from 1910 to 1924. He is credited as a discoverer of the alpha ray, according to which Wikipedia. He was born October 29, 1870, and he died November 3, 1940. His education is Columbia University. And here we have British scientists. Ernst Rutherford, first Baron Rutherford of Nelson, OM, FRS, Hans, FRSE, was a New Zealand physicist who came to be known as the father of nuclear physics. Encyclopedia Britannica considers him to be the greatest experimentalist since Michael Faraday, according to Wikipedia. Michael Faraday worked on electromagnetic induction, and he helped create the formula for magnetism and electricity. He was born August 30, 1870, in Brightwater, New Zealand and he died October 19, 1937 in Cambridge, United Kingdom. He moved to Britain. So they noticed that some of the radioactivity of thorium compounds could be blown away by breezes in the laboratory. Again, thorium is element number 90. So they discovered that some of the thorium compounds were blown away in the breeze in the laboratory. So radon-219 actinon has a half-life of 3.92 seconds and was found independently in 1904 by German chemist Friedrich O. Giselle. Excuse me if I pronounced her name wrong. And French physicist André-Louis de Bern, seen here. 1904 Germany, 1904 France. 
Radioactive isotopes having masses ranging from 204 have been identified. The longest lived of these being radon 222, which has a half-life of 3.82 days. Again, a half-life is simply the amount of time that it takes for half of the original material that you started with to be present. So it takes 3.82 days for there to be half of the original amount of radon that you started with. So all the isotopes decay into stable end products of helium and isotopes of heavy metals, usually lead. So here we have helium and here we have lead. Helium is element number two and lead is element number 82. When a mixture of trace compounds of radon 222 and fluorine gas is heated to approximately 400 degrees Celsius, 752 degrees Fahrenheit, a non-volatile radon fluoride is formed. The intense radiation of Mercury and Curie amounts of radon provides sufficient energy to allow radon in such quantities to react spontaneously with gaseous fluorine at room temperature and with liquid fluorine at negative 196 degrees Fahrenheit or 321 degrees Fahrenheit. And the reason this is significant is because, again, as previously stated, radon is part of the noble gases, which means that it doesn't combine with other elements. But in this rare case, if you alter these conditions and fluorine being one of the most electronegative elements on the periodic table reacts with radon extremely extremely well and although it's a noble gas it is able to react with it if you go back to the fluorine video that I previously made a while back you can take a look at how reactive fluorine really is and how it can even react with some noble gases radon is also oxidized by halogen fluorides such as ClF3 BrF3 BrF5 IF7 and NIF6 which is nickel and fluorine to negative in hydrofluoric acid solutions or HF to give stable solutions of radon fluoride the products of these fluorination reactions have not been analyzed in detail because of their small and intense radioactivity. Nevertheless, by comparing reactions of radon with those of krypton and xenon, seen here, krypton and xenon are just the noble gases above radon, it has been possible to deduce that radon forms a difluoride, RnF2, and derivatives of the difluoride. Studies show that ionic radon is present in many of these solutions and is believed to be Rn2+, RnF+, and RnF3-. negative. The chemical behavior of radon is similar to that of metal fluoride and is consistent with its position in the periodic table as a metalloid element. So that was radon explained in 13 minutes or less. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next element video, tellurium. Other than that, have a great one.